subscribed right. for a while, longer, for, for example, than the beginning of the year, then you know that I like to start off the year with an easy beginner build, something that anyone can do, even if you don't really have any experience building pedals or guitars or things like that. And this year we start off with this. And it lets you plug in one of your effect pedals here and one of your effect pedals here. And with the true bypass, switch around between them. And two years ago I made this, which is a feedback looper. The video's on the channel and if you want to, you can watch it. And for this one, if you want to build this, you're gonna have to watch that video. It's a super easy build and I really feel like it's something that anyone can make. The issue with this one that you will run into and that is probably the reason why it never really took off and why the video don't really have any views is that it has a send and return function basically where you have to plug in another pedal and use that to create the feedback. So. You have to, for example, plug in a DS1, which I think I do in the video, and have it turned on. And then you press this button to start feedbacking. Now this can get confusing because that means you have to dedicate a pedal to not be sound, you know, a distortion pedal that isn't doing distortion. You have to dedicate it to do feedback. And that means that if you want a distortion sound, for your signal, you're gonna have to have another distortion. It also means that you have to experiment and find the right distortion pedal for what you're doing and uh, one that sounds nice with this pedal because you get different results with different ones. And if I remember correctly, I haven't watched the video in a long time, I, I think I use a fuzz face that I've made and maybe I'll show you it in some video. And I think I also use a DS1. And I don't think neither of them really worked with the pedal. Maybe that's the reason why it never really took off because it didn't really sound that nice and I should have spent more time trying to come up with something that actually worked. So in today's video, we're gonna remove these two jacks and replace them with one of these LM boards. If you've been around for a longer time and some of you, a lot of you, subscribe for this, you know that I've made pedals out of these little LM boards. The LM3H6 as it says here on the back. And we're basically just gonna replace the in and out jacks with this one and see what happens and what it sounds like. You might see that I have a different trim pot and that's because a while back I realized that uh, this one was broken. And when you buy these, you know, a package of 10 of these, the risk that you get at least one that is broken is fairly high. And so I wanted to experiment and see if I could uh, fix it. And I replaced the pot, the trim pot, with another trim pot. And it seems to have solved everything for me. I'm not saying that that's going to be the case for everyone. It worked for me. And I also did a post on it on Instagram. So if you want to, you can go over there and maybe you'll find something that you need. So if you like this video and you think that this is interesting and you want to build this, I'm going to give you an over glance of everything inside of the pedal as we go along. But if you need more information, check out the original video. It will be linked in the description below. And I'm hoping that this will make this a better pedal that is easier to use because I realize that it's a little bit difficult, maybe, to... Um, have to figure out what distortion or fuss uh, you're gonna use in the effect pedal uh, circuit thing of this and just inserting this little LM will hopefully solve that so yeah hopefully this will be another way of making a pedal out of these little LM boards and maybe it will be fun uh, so we're just gonna build it, try it, see what happens, and hopefully things are gonna work. I'm gonna use the trim pot as is, you don't need to replace it, and I'm just gonna try to find a sweet spot for it. And I suggest you do the same, I don't really think there is a point to switch out the trim pot for a bigger pot so that you can control it. I might be wrong, 
in uh, this and if you feel different about it you can also check out some of my other videos where I build the pedal if you haven't already seen them where I show you how to replace the trim bot. So without any further delays because I've already spoken way too long this intro doesn't need to be longer. Let's jump into the overview and see the inside of these pedals. Okay so a quick overview of this. If you want more information don't forget to check out the first original video. This is the input and this is the output. This is the send and this is the return. Here is a 500k pot and here's the switch. This is a DPDT switch. So you know and in this little heat shrink tube is a 2k resistor. Over here in this blob which might be a little bit hard to see there is an LED. The blue wires are ground wires and the green wires are the lead connections. I didn't have any black wires when I did this, which you probably can tell. And now we are first just gonna add two more wires. So we need to add another ground wire from the power because the Ellen board needs some power, which might be obvious and I hope it is. So another ground there and another lead as well. So I'm using another blue and another green just to keep things from um, getting confusing. Something like that. I hope you can see. Let me point with my awl on this ground leg. I added another blue wire. I hope you can see it. It's the bigger leg. And on the last leg, ignoring the middle leg, I added another green wire, which is the lead. So now I have these two wires. And they are going to get connected to the ground and the, the VCC here. So the next step now is going to be to unscrew these two jacks. So I'll be back in a second when I've done that. So I've removed the two jacks for the send and return. And I have the wires loose here now. I've put a little zip tie on the two wires that are going to the tip of the send. And... That I did because I don't want to mix any of them up. I have three green wires, as you can probably tell. Here they are. And two of them are going to the send and one is going to the return. And I um, don't want to confuse them. And also those two wires are going to be together. So I'm holding them together with each other as well, with uh, zip tie. I also have this blue wire, but that goes along with the, with the zip tied too. So I can keep those to the side and I can keep this one to the side. I'm going to pre-tin this one because I can see that it's frilling away a little bit and I don't want that because that's annoying. Now we can do the first thing we need to do and that is take this ground wire and this lead wire and connect them to the ground and the VCC. And just because I don't like things to poke each other I'm going to snip off these two like so. And I'll connect to these up here, a ground and the VC, C, and then on the back here I'll connect the ground and the in. But first we're going to connect these. So let's start off with a little bit of tin and connect this ground wire like so. Then with a little bit more tin, let's connect this VC cable. So and now they're in place. Just like that. Hopefully you can see them. They're just going to the jack, the DC jack, like everything else that I've made. Okay, so the return gets connected here to the out, which I hope you can see. And the send is connected here. I put them on the back because I cut this off. It goes to the in, which you can see right there. And then I put on a ground wire that I just put here on the ground here. It's one of these legs here, and I've just attached it to a jack, so everything is grounded. And that's because the only other ground is this ground here that is going to the DC. But the DC ground is not connected to the rest, because this is plastic. So, by adding this ground, everything is grounded. You don't necessarily need to have a bunch of ground wires going in all directions, because the enclosure is made of metal and will ground everything. Now we just need to put the back lid back on top and 
we can screw everything down. And let's try to put this in a way so things don't get hurt. I'm gonna pull this one out. I have adjusted this trim pot so that it um, will um, feed back enough. I don't really want it to go too crazy, which um, it's gonna be hard to, 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 to show you how to do this, but I don't think it's something that you need me to show you because I think it's one of those things that you should probably do yourself and, uh, and decide for yourself what you want. Some of you might want to just put it to max and use it that way and just uh, basically go balls to the walls and when you press down the feedback you have as much of the volume available to you as possible and you can just use the gain as much as you want to. Some of you might want to actually replace this and use an actual pot to move so that you have all the sounds available to you. I, I felt like that was maybe an overkill for this one and that's why I decided to use the trim pot. Maybe at another date I'll change that. I do have these holes here for example so the pot could work there. But anyway, have it basically halfway so if you if you think uh, if you had like a, a knob on top that had a way to point it would not be pointing um, down it would be pointing straight up. So I'm at half point basically. Uh, not really, I'm a little bit off, so I have a little bit less volume than that, but I think this will be good enough for me at this moment. Maybe at some other time I'll change that around and mess with it even more and try to really find the perfect spot where I think it's uh, absolutely the best it can be. And uh, yeah, if that happens and if you're interested in seeing an update, then, you know, I'll make one. But for now, I think I'm just gonna screw these screws in and uh, then we'll just jump into listening to it. And there we have it. It's a little bit dirty. I'm gonna quickly find a knob to put on this. So here is the pedal now. I uh, hope you like it. Obviously it looks the way it, it did before when I built the first time around. And yeah, I've already played it obviously because I needed to set the trim pot and I thought as I was experimenting with that I um, you know, would do that and listen to it so that I had something to say. And I think, I mean, it is what it is. I suppose it it is useful when that's what you want. I think I'm gonna replace this switch with a momentary switch so that I can just find the right moments for the kind of feedback I wanna have so uh, that it will work for me. I already have another feedback looper pedal that I bought uh, that I really really like and if you've been subscribed for a while you might have seen my review of that pedal but you know it's a question of building things that are fun to build and experimenting and having uh, fun <laughs> which you know some of you will probably look at this and think ah this is ridiculous I might as well buy a pedal and if that's how you feel, do that. I'm not trying to make anyone build something they don't want to build. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But if you think this is fun, I had fun building this. Uh, so you might also. So yeah, I think I'm gonna experiment with it. And I might find the perfect sweet spot for the trim pot. That's gonna take a long time, I think, to find, or possibly it not at all because maybe I'll just uh, stumble upon something and be lucky and uh, yeah I don't know but I, 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 I it's almost there so let's jump into listening to it now and see what happens but before that I just want to say thanks so much for watching 
And don't forget to stay awesome and cool. And if you feel like building this weird feedback looper thing, then go ahead and do it. And hopefully you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. And you can use it to make a bunch of so sound. You can plug anything into it. And you can have a f pedal board of a bunch of weird things. And create oscillating, weird, crazy soundscapes. So, yeah. Hopefully it's fun and interesting. So, yeah. Until next time. Wait, I've already said... Stay awesome and cool, which means the video is over. Oh god, no! Ah! Okay, so here is my clean signal. It's a little dirty, but um, for all, you know, for the demo or test or whatever you want to call this, it works fine. <laughs> Control at uh, zero, basically, and then we press this, and we we don't really get anything except for a little bit of a weird clicking. But that's because this needs to move. It can't really be nothing. So yeah, there you have it. You can do a bunch of crazy and weird things, like if you do things like this. With that on. That's why I want to switch this out, because I think that if I, if I can press this down and hold it down while doing a bend... You know, like that. It will be kind of cool. you like it I think it's cool you want to do something cool with it yourself yeah.